Hello and welcome to this presentation of the constructor pattern for React components. And we're going to talk about uh, what it is and why it matters. So I've taken the example from the React documentation, the tic-tac-toe game, as it's, it has some complexity enough to discuss this pattern. Um, so you kind of get a sense of how it helps you. But the pattern itself is meant to manage complexity, right? So when we look at the first component here, we don't even need that pattern because we don't have enough complexity to even produce the pattern. So with this simple square component, what's important to pick up from, from this is that the way we read code is line by line, right? And the good thing about the component is that the first thing we see when we read the code of that component is what its name is. So it's a square which puts us, uh, which starts our mental model, right? It's a square and we have a lot of context we can bring into what the square is, especially when we know it's a tic-tac-toe game, right? Um, and then we have the dependencies of that square. So we have a value and we have an on square click. Uh, the value is a little bit ambiguous, but again, we know its dependencies, which is important to understand the rest of the implementation of the component. And immediately we see that it returns a UI and we can read how it uses those dependencies to produce the UI of this component. So this is great, right? But now if we move to the next component, the board, again, we see the name, we see its dependencies, but then we jump straight into implementation details of a handle click. Now we haven't read how the UI is built up for this component yet. So we don't know when this handle click is called, what this I means, the argument to handle click. And we get distracted by all these implementation details, which is harder for us to reason about now, now because we don't know what this board is yet, right? Um, and as we move down, we see that we, we have a winner, which is, which is used to build up the UI. And then we have a status, which is also used to build up the UI, but, uh, we don't know, um, anything about where this status is used yet. So when we read the implementation details of the winner, uh, we have less context to reason about that implementation detail. And then we finally get to the, to the actual UI. Uh, where we can actually see where the status is used, that we actually, when we click the square, that's when we handle the click and we pass in the actual index of the square we're clicking. Now, um, we can do a refactor of this. We can use the constructor pattern. And what that basically means is that we're just going to take this function and we're going to move it after the return statement. And you can do this in JavaScript. It's called function hoisting. And the great thing about this is that even though we move the function after the return statement, it can still point to the dependencies and the state of this component, right? That doesn't matter. This will still just work. And if we go back up here, we're also going to take the code or the implementation details of the status, and we're going to say create status. And we're going to create a function, create status, and we're going to, oops, implement here. And we're rather going to return the status uh, like so. And if we move back up here now and we try to read this component again, we see first, again, we see the name of the component, which makes us build up like the start of the mental image. We see its dependencies and we see the state it defines to be able to consume this UI. So with these dependencies, with the state, we can see, uh, we can reason immediately about the UI. How is this state and these dependencies being used? Um, and what's the behavior of this UI calling the handle click. And now you have a lot more context to understand the actual implementation details of this. And you might think this is silly, but you have to remember that as a developer, implementing components, you are the one implementing components and you have all this context in your head when you implement the components. But when you in the future or some other developer goes to read a component, 
you can help them by using a pattern like this simply by focusing on building up a context of like the name, the dependencies and the state and the UI first, and then you put the implementation details after. So this pattern is actually very much like a class because in the class you have a constructor that builds up the object and then it's implicitly returned when you do a new, new class. Um, and after that constructor, you have the methods, the implementation details. And then you have like a bunch of keywords for like private, public, uh, you have the disk binding and all of this, but you can have these benefits by just using a pattern with a function or a component function. So everything before the return statement, that's the constructor. That's where you build up the actual state of the component and you return the UI definition. And after that, you have the implementation details or the methods of that component. Some of those methods or functions are used to create the state, like it's implementation details for creating the state, or they are functions that are actually part of the returned UI and acts as interactions with the component. No matter they're considered implementation details, that's distracting when you're trying to reason about what that component actually is. So now we have a more complex component. Um, and this game doesn't uh, take any dependencies, but it builds up quite a bit of state. And then again, it, it starts presenting implementation details before we even know what the, the UI, uh, the returned UI looks like. So we're going to do uh, the same treatment here. We're going to move these two functions down here. We're going to actually change use state here because this is a quite exotic code, uh, array nine and fill it with null. Um, you can, uh, I consider that like an implementation detail of creating the history. So you can do create history here. And then we can do function create history. And this is going to return this thing. Um, and then we have implementation details on how to create a move. So we're going to take this and we're going to say create move. Function create move. And then I think we can just do this. So now we have uh, create move. And again, what we've accomplished now is that we see the name of the component. There aren't any dependencies. We see how it builds up its state. And then we see how that state is being used in the UI without considering, considering the implementation details of that state or, or this um, callback to, to on play. Now, how does this actually differ from what we call helper functions? So helper functions are standalone functions that can uh, operate outside of components and be reused by any part of your code base really, because it just takes some input and returns some output. But what we did with our functions inside the components is that we had functions that actually pointed to uh, the dependencies, like the props of the component or to existing state of the component. So it's encapsulated inside the component and can just uh, reference anything it wants inside the component. We did kind of create a utility uh, or a helper function here, the create history, but it's tied to this specific component. So it's just, it's fine to put it there, right? But anything that's used across components, that's what we define as a helper function. Uh, and that's kind of the key of it, right? It's being used by multiple components. So the constructor uh, pattern in summary is like when you write your code and you can have kind of this list in your head, it's like, what is it? Well, that's the name of the component, right? It's a board. And then what does it need? And these are the props or its dependencies. And for the board component, that was XS next, squares, and on play. 
And then it's, what does it do? It renders the board, taking click events on squares, right? That's the next thing you consume. And then you're primed to actually better reason about how does it do it. So in the context of the, the board, it calculates a winner by looping over and finding three in a row. Like it wasn't important how it calculated a winner. It just calculates a winner. That's enough for you to like understand what the board does, right? But if you want to actually do something about how it calculates that winner, then you need to read those implementation details. And then it creates a status by checking if there is a winner. And it handles the click uh, by updating the index square and passing the new squares to the parent. So answering these three questions first helps you reason about the last question. And that is basically the promise of the constructor pattern. And again, this is not like going to change <laughs> your life, um, but it's important to reflect on what does it mean to read code line by line? And what can we do as developers to help the next developer better reason about our uh, components? So that's it. Uh, thanks for listening and see ya.